Hold on a minute there, Frank. Hmm? Look across there. What? Oh, there. <laughs> Some celebrity getting his photo taken. Oh, you know him? Yeah. Impressed man by the look of the photographer. Look at him. Busy as a bee. Yeah, yeah you need a lot of hide to, to bail some big shop up as he comes out of his hotel. Bail him up on a busy street and get him all set up, smiling and so on. Yeah. Uh, now he's got him, look. Yeah. See the flash? <laughs> Let's get up another go. There must be a big future in photography these days. You know, newspapers using more pictures. And there's all these models getting their pictures taken. TV and all that. <laughs> Yeah, far cry to the old days. The photographer with his head under a black shroud singing out to watch the birdie. <laughs> watch the birdie. Yeah. Not much future in it those days. No, there wasn't. Reminds me of a photographer I used to see once. I reckon his kind of photography had less future than any other I've known. Yeah? Or a stunt man or something, Dan? No, no, no. No stunts for this man. Sheer bravery. Sheer guts. There came a legend in the Middle East during the war and in the jungle. If ever there was photography without a future, it was the way Damien Pierre practiced it. Citation. <laughs> Presenting authentic stories of heroism and gallantry taken from the histories of war. The story of Damien Perra, Australian official war cine photographer. Damien Perra? Hmm. An unusual name. Oh, I can't say I've ever come across it. Well, maybe not. A bit before your time. Do you ever see any of those TV documentaries on war? Oh, sure. <laughs> I look at them all the time. Yeah, the last one I saw was was on the war in the Pacific. Yeah, it was extra grass. Well, and you can bet your next week's crew to a pinch of melon seeds that a lot of the shots you saw in it were taken by Damien Pera. He was an official cine photographer of the AIF. <laughs> I didn't know they had such a thing. Yeah, sure they had them. Had official war correspondents, official artists, photographers. Well, war history had photographers too. How else do you reckon there's all these photographs of actions? I don't know. I just never thought about it. Huh, never got round to it. Yeah, it's a chancy old way to fight a war, I'd reckon. Uh, the way Damien Perra fought it with a movie camera, it certainly was chancy. I struck him first in the desert, or oh, into Brook, really. He'd been poking about, getting pictures of Stukas die bombing us, all that kind of caper. When other blokes were hitting the slit trench, <laughs> yeah, not Damien Perra. He had him in his sights. These camera sights as the dive bombers came down. Yeah, real cool he was. You know, I saw him beer, beard a German general we had there as a prisoner. Oh, real hun. General von Ravenstein. <laughs> Straight laced German. But we was his prisoners to look at him. Refused to talk to correspondents, have his picture taken, anything. Anyway. That was until Damien Pera turned up. And that there German general recognised he was up against a, a tough one, so he posed. <laughs> he posed. <laughs> yes, I could tell you some stories. Like when we was across in Greece and Damien Pera turned up again with his camera. Yeah, I, I never saw any pictures on TV on Greece. Or not war ones. No, no, he was there, all right. He was everywhere, whether it was a decent old blue. Yeah, Nazi tanks, Nazi dive bombers, he got them all. Sandstorms, heat. Flies, under shell fire, bombs, all that. Damien Perra was there recording it. Now, I reckon he did his best stuff when he came back from the desert with the rest of us and went into the jungle. Into the jungle? <laughs> I reckon that had been the last place for a photographer. Oh, apart from any risk. I mean, dark, gloomy, damp. Well, there'd be no light. <sighs> well, he was a good photographer. And he used to often say he got his best pictures in the jungle. Well, why? I don't see it myself. The way I picture the jungle, it's all growth and heat. Yeah, steamy heat. Dripping and stink. Mud, slippery, moss everywhere, and frogs. And always gloomy, sort of. Yeah, well, that's right, so it was. And, of course, it was real ambush country. The kind of stuff where you're breathing one minute and dead the next. 
And this fellow takes his finest pictures there. Damien Perra was a man for realism. He found it in the jungle. Writing later, while he was still fighting the war in New Guinea with his camera, he said, In the jungle, you're either right inside of the war or right out. On the other hand, pictures in the Middle East often show men moving in the middle distance and background. In making the Kokoda Trail film, I had a stroke of luck. I found the battalion which had been first to contact the Japs and had fought for six weary weeks and was now coming out for a long overdue spell. The boys were shadows of their former selves. Oh, poor kids. They couldn't have taken it much longer. Dead beat. But they did enough. They held the Japs along the Kakoda until reinforcements got here from the Middle East. Get on, you fellas. Did a mighty job. Well, this year, boys. <laughs> A stone, the bleeding clothes. There's that movie photographer, Damien Perra. Shooting a film on him as they come down the Golden Stairs. Let me describe it in Damien Perra's own words. He wrote, In the dull jungle light, those battered men paraded. It was one of the most moving spectacles I've ever seen. My favourite shot in the Kokoda film is one showing the two rain-drenched soldiers walking casually through that awful rain. Every time it comes to that shot on the screen, my stomach seems to shrivel up in sympathy for those lads. They've been through every sort of hardship. Even that torrential rain cannot stir them. Later I went to film the assault on Salamoa. Here I tried to show the devilish country in which our men fought for long, weary months. I tried to accent the human side of their story. Gaunt, haggard men walking the jungle trails, senses alert in spite of deep weariness, the strain of fighting and living etched on stubborn faces. Get down there, Perry, get down. You get your head blown off. Yeah, I might as well be talking to myself while the notice that pair of takes. Got to be up front where the fighting is. Hello. Now he's got his movie camera onto the bungs. He sees pictures and everything. Yes, Damien Perra saw pictures in everything and shot his pictures regardless of risk. Let us hear what he had to say of the New Guinea War at its deadliest. He wrote, The natives played their part, shouldering cargo, stoically making their way to our exposed forward positions. One close-up of a native following an action is a study in human emotions. Tense expectation, foreboding, grim relief show on their faces in a minute's space. We simply cannot do without the natives. Father English, the padre, reads the burial service over the graves of three fine NCOs. A moving tribute. The men themselves stand silent in the drizzling rain. Three more to remember. Three more to avenge. Next, the wounded are seen, walking back to the advanced dressing station. Natives acting as stretcher bearers handle their charges gently. The concern the natives feel for the wounded is shown on their faces. A blind soldier, led by an RAP sergeant, stumbles over a stony creek, and then staggers ankle-deep through the clinging mud of the jungle track. I filmed this picture in the hope that due credit would be given to the men who undertook assault on Salamaua. No story, no picture can do justice to their spirit, to their unyielding guts. This film may help others to understand, never to forget. Yeah, I tell you what, Dan. I reckon I've seen that shot you were telling me about, that blinded soldier being led out by the medical bloke. Yeah, it was vivid. You know, I can see it now. He was on his last legs, that soldier. That's right, he was. Yeah, that was one of Damien Perra's most famous shots. You'll often see a still picture of it, too. He captured the terrible personal tragedy of the men who were wounded or fell in that forward fighting in New Guinea. Did he uh, 
Did he go right through New Guinea? Yes, I suppose you could say he almost did, really. I remember hearing at one time that he went across to Timor where our independent soldiers were fighting as guerrillas against the Japs. That was his form. When they were there, guerrillas, lived with them. And the shot the same as they did, except he used his camera. We got to pull out Pera. Run, man! Back this way! This way! Oh, what can you do with a type like that? Here on Timor, we fight a hit and run war, but this pair of he wants to stay behind, and we run. Stay behind, running film through a camera. Where is he today, Dan? Huh? You see his film? That's his memorial today. He didn't get out. No. No, he was killed in action. The way I heard it, he was with our men on the attack on the Palo Islands late in 44. It was after he came back from Timor, and our tanks were hammering at the Jeps. Our tanks were rolling forward, smashing against Jap earthworks, building at the Jap foxholes with guns and machine guns, flushing the enemy out. <sighs> it was a kind of picture he couldn't resist. Smoke and blast and action. So... Up he went with his camera. Right up. Right up with the tanks. Into the swamp and right up to a Jap foxhole the tanks had missed. Australia lost a brave man that 17th day of September 1944 when a burst of Japanese machine gun fire cut Damien Perra down just 12 feet from the gun muzzle. He died where he had fought with his camera, in the front line. Citation. These stories are authentic. The program is produced at AWA by Donald Crosby for Army Public Relations. (laughs) 